science has recognized now for God over 15 years that human civilization has upended the environment, upended the web of life so much that we uh, have precipitated what is called the sixth mass extinction of life on this planet, which by definition already says there were five mass extinction events before this. Uh, and I say, what does it mean mass extinction? It says some cataclysmic event happens that undermines the web of life and up to 90% of life disappeared and then came back again until the next cataclysm and then went through that. We are in the sixth mass extinction. The fifth one, the previous one, was 66 million years ago when the dinosaurs were here and the world was flush, tropical-like forests and everything was, life was teeming and a comet hit near Mexico, a big comet that upended uh, nature, wiping out up to 75% of life, wiping out all the dinosaurs uh, and a lot of life forms that we don't see here anymore. Uh, they went extinct in this process and right now civilization has been responsible for creating what is called the sixth mass extinction of life and the sixth mass extinction of life simply says that human behavior has undermined the web of life so much that we are destroying the web of life without recognizing the most important fact we are a product of the web of life we are nature and if nature disappears from underneath us so do we disappear and i say so what's the issue i said we've been in a mass extinction event for about 15 years meaning species of organisms are being lost faster than in previous mass extinction events but it's due to the way that we are destroying the environment from which we come there was a separation that somehow humans thought they were separate from the environment I mean, the Genesis story said, oh, nature was created and then they added some humans like an option at the very end that we were not part of nature, we were added. And also the biblical story says we were given dominion over the plants and animals, which means, oh, we are the masters. That's what it said in the Bible. Now, science came along, changed the Genesis story, came to a story of evolution. But the important part about the conventional evolution story is it results from what are called random mutations. Random mutations, by definition, are accidental mutations. And that an organism, uh, uh, two organisms mate, they, let's say dogs, they make a litter of puppies. And I say almost all the puppies look just like the parents. But then there's a weird one, the runt of the litter, the different one. And I go, well, what does it represent? He said, well, there was a genetic alteration in, in the development of this particular puppy. And I go, if the alteration makes the puppy stronger, it will survive and pass on the new genes. And if the alteration made the puppy weaker, it'll die out and won't pass on the new genes. So evolution is a series of random mutations followed by what is called nature selects or natural selection. I go, so what is the relevant of that? And it goes, well, if the mutations that started our evolution were random events, and I say, then what's the purpose for us to be here? And the answer is, well, obviously there's no purpose. We were here randomly. So between the church, which gave us dominion, and modern science, and listen to this, this is the mission state. What is the mission of modern science? Well, it was actually written in 1650 by a, a philosopher scientist, Francis Bacon. And he said, the mission of modern science, which is still present, is to obtain knowledge that we can uh, control and dominate nature. That's the mission of science to contain, to you know, get at the knowledge so we can dominate and control nature. <laughs> I go, well, how's that working out? And I go, well, apparently the knowledge we have acquired is enough to destroy nature, uh, and not survive in it. So we're facing a mass extinction. And that says, what does that mean? It says, well, since it's caused by human behavior, then guess what? The only solution is to change human behavior and this is what we're experiencing right now and i say what does it mean he said the current version of culture on this planet the behaviors that we that we are ripping off the garden of eden that we're taking we're pillaging we're taking all the resources and we're doing you know we're using up this planet like it was just a bunch of stuff to use up this process is what has separated us from nature and has uh, caused us to destroy the web of life, which we are part of, which means we are destroying ourselves. The uh, extinction we're talking about is not like a thousand years from now, it's within decades. You know, I mean, for example, uh, it's recognized by science that, listen to this, 2048, how far is that from here? Not very far. There will be no fish 
in the ocean on planet Earth. That's almost like a science fiction story. There's no fish in the ocean. Why? A, we've overfished the population. B, we polluted the water. C, we destroy the breeding grounds the way we fish and put nets over and grab all that stuff. So humans have caused the extinction of, of fish. It's causing it right now. <clears throat> But we have a few years left. Okay. I go, uh, and what else? I said, well, if you were here in 1970, the World Wildlife Foundation took a survey. How many animals are on planet Earth? They just redid the survey two years ago, and guess what they found? Two thirds of the entire animal population on Earth have disappeared since 1970. We only have one third the number of animals left, and they're disappearing faster and faster. And that's because we are not living in harmony with the planet. And it says we need to change our behavior. And it's like uh, Einstein said, you know, you, uh, uh, you know, it's the insanity, uh, the idea of recreating the same behavior over and over again, expecting it to change. So we we have to change the behavior. We're being forced to change that behavior. I said we're being forced in many different ways. I mean. Uh, the disruption of civilization. Well, we have racial issues, we have religious issues, we have economic issues, uh, we have issues at every different level uh, that humans are creating uh, disharmony in the system. And then, of course, we're destroying the environment, and then nature comes back and gives us this pandemic and says, "You guys haven't learned the lesson yet, and we don't need." You in the garden anymore because humans are like a virus in the garden. They're destroying the garden. Nature says, "Get out," or learn to not repeat the same problems. And this is what we're finding in a moment of chaos in this world right now. It looks crazy, and I go, "It is crazy for a very simple, fundamental reason. You cannot create a sustainable civilization on today's foundation of civilization." So civilization is causing a problem. So what do we experience? A breakdown. And I go, well, why is this breakdown? I said, because if it doesn't break down, we can't build a new one. And if we don't build a new one, it's only a few decades, and this one's done. So it's like we're being pushed in a hurry-up fashion. Now, do something. And what is it? Change behavior, because we've lost our connection with nature. And we should go back to the indigenous people, whether. Uh, they're Aborigines in Australia, Native Americans. Uh, they, they called, you know, the Indians, which misnamed, but uh, uh, even Druids in Europe. These are the ancient Indigenous people. I say, what about these people? That's different than us. And the difference is that they saw the world as a garden, and they were gardeners to maintain the world. We see the world as resources, and have uh, sucked all the resources out, and then go, hey. Can't continue this way. There's no resource. I go. Yes, <laughs> this is the problem. <laughs>、uh, we have to change. So the chaos that you see, including this pandemic, which don't get me started on that, but you might. But don't get me started on that.、Uh, <laughs> this pandemic is part of this whole thing that says, look what happened. Jobs were changing. The way we were living, certain jobs were just not. You can't do these jobs anymore in this world. And all of a sudden, it says, yeah, we're being forced. To make a new world right now, and the idea is holding on to the old world is the worst thing you could possibly do because it's not coming back. Fortunately, because it didn't work, and that we're creating a new world right now, and that's why I thank Shay for being on this program because I, you are an audience of what people that are looking for answers outside of the box, and that's what represents a cultural creative. Don't look for the answers in the box. The box is where the problem is. The answers don't exist. Buckminster Fuller said, "You want to change civilization? Don't change civilization. Leave it. Build a new one, and then the people will come there." So we're in a moment of choice here, and it says, "You're participating in this evolutionary process right now. You're seeing it fall apart. You got two choices: one, bemoan the fact it's falling apart. Oh my God, my life is so threatened. My job, I, I'm so afraid. It's scary." And、I'm, And I go that, or say, it's falling apart. Thank God, because now it's time for us to learn to live in a better way on this planet with each other. Learn how to live with each other. Learn how to live with nature, and change the way we're living so we can create a civilization that can move into the future.